My name's Nick and I'm head of trading. And today I'm joined by Carlo from Hummingbot to do part two of our Hummingbot tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at uh, the advanced features on the Hummingbot. But before we get into it, since starting our Hummingbot campaign, we've created over $3 million worth of volume with 70 participants. We've added 7% of daily volume to the Binance order book. And we've nearly given away $5,000 worth of rewards to our, our users who are joining the uh, liquidity mining campaign. So we actually want to give away more rewards, but we need more users to give uh, rewards to. And that's why we're going to go over the part two of the, uh, of the tutorial today. So Carlo, first off, how are you going? And secondly, are you excited to go through the uh, advanced features with us? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on again. And definitely, I think in the first one, we covered the basic features and we definitely want to just give more tips on how our market makers, Hummingbot monitor participants can be more successful. So in this one, yeah, definitely excited to show you guys a, a bit, a, a give you more of a tour of some of the advanced features that we think will really help some of our users. Cool. Cool. So I guess today, um, cause you're the expert and we're doing the more advanced features, uh, Maybe we'll get you to run us over what exactly uh, the advanced features are that are available to us and how we use them. Um, and, and maybe we can think about, also talk about when we would use these features. Sure, yeah, that sounds good. So I'll just start off with uh, sharing my screen. So let me know if you can see that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just a few tips first, I think, I'll, one of the biggest risks of market making or participating in Hummingbot miners is inventory risk. Um, so because a market maker to place orders, uh, they need to hold some amount of assets in inventory um, that they have exposure to the price of those assets they're holding. And more specifically, the inventory risk for market makers is uh, can occur when they're buying and holding assets when prices are falling or selling them too quickly when prices are rising. Um, so that's why we, we've created a number of advanced market making features in Hummingbot, which are really designed to kind of try to customize and mitigate this risk as much as possible. Um, so just a, to get started, just a few resources we have here. I, I'll actually start off here uh, in our Hummingbot site on our Academy tab. Uh, so some of the features I'll discuss today, we actually wrote an article called Inventory Risk. Here, so you can find that in our Academy. And I'll also refer to this just because we have some graphs that kind of explain some of the concepts that I'll be discussing today and some of the features that I'll be discussing today. And so this kind of goes into more detail of what I just mentioned, the inventory risk in trading and market making. Uh, and then later on in this article, we have uh, the, uh, the features that we, that we use to kind of mitigate some of this. Um, so uh, to get started on the actual what functions we have available, if we just go back to the Hummingbot docs site. So here on our docs page, so docs.hummingbot.io, we can see on the tab on the navigation bar, there's a section called advanced market making. And this is where you'll find more information on some of the features that I'll be discussing today. And we can just go through these in, in kind of order, the ones that are most relevant. So you can see them listed here. Uh, for the first one, I'll start off, uh, it's called order levels. So what order levels does, it's a feature where a market maker can place multiple orders at different price points, different price spread levels. So for example, um, I can place a bid order at a tighter spread, let's say 0.5% spread, and then I could have subsequent orders at wider spreads. Like, so I'll buy at 0.5, some amount at 0.5% spread, I'll buy an additional amount at 1% spread and so on. And so you can have different sizes of orders at different pricing points. Okay. So, and, and sorry, if I'm, if I'm using this, um, this, this function mm -hmm. and placing more orders, does that mean I'm creating more volume and should be uh, paid a greater reward? Yes, that's right. So as, as long as that for the, our liquidity mining campaign for, for NEM tokens, for ZEM tokens, as long as it's within 2% spread, then they will be count. They will count towards earning rewards. So, for example, you can have uh, order levels at 0.5 percent, 1 percent, 1.5 percent. Those will all all, all count. Um, if you go past 2 percent, then then that's where the orders would stop being counted. All right. So more orders, the better. Yep. 
And, and the rationale here uh, for this feature is that a market maker may be willing to transact more, uh, more assets at better prices, so at wider spreads. So if they can buy at a cheaper price, then they can increase the sizes because they have more risk appetite. Sure. Um, so you can read about that here in order of votes, but then actually we have an instance of the bot running here. So I'll just start it up. So here's, a, here's just a test uh, Zen BTC bot. Uh, I just started it, so now it's placing orders. So if I hit status and now let me know if you can see the screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So you can see right now by default setting, it has, has one order on each side. So this one we started out, it's roughly 50% 50, 50 um, Zen Bitcoin. Uh, so here we have one order at about roughly 0.5% spread uh, on each side. And it's placing uh, 840 orders at, at, at each uh, for each order. So if we wanted to change the order levels, we hit config and then we go to order levels. So let's say instead of just one, I wanna have three on each side. So we can say three. And then another um, setting I would change order levels amounts. So say right now it's placing 840 order for the size of 840 them. Let's say I want to increase that, let's just say by 100. So that means every subsequent order will be 100 more than the previous one. So it was 840, 940, and then 1,040. Okay. And then the last config I'll set is the order level spread. So let's say right now the first order was at 0.5% spread. Uh, I want to, let's say, increase the orders uh, in 0.5% spread increments. So I'll put 0.5%. So what that means is it will create three orders on each side, 0.5%, 1%, and 1.5%. Cool. So this one, if I hit status, now you can see it's already updated those settings. Uh, you can see here um, the, uh, the amounts are, the, the, the spreads is creating, so it's, uh, the, the, the spreads are roughly 0.5%, 1%, and 1.5%. The reason it's slightly different here, you can see, is because but when I when I place orders versus when it's I hit status, the price has moved slightly, so that's why it's not exactly 0.5 percent. Okay, great. I mean that that's that's really handy to have because you know I was running my my bot after our last tutorial, and I was thinking like you know I want to be adding more orders to the book, so I can get the rewards. And um, yeah, I I didn't know how to do it. I thought I had to run multiple bots. So yeah, I mean this is this is a great function. Yep. So this is kind of the first function. So this is um, uh, so this is kind of like a lot of like professional market makers do it. Obviously, at different price points, they have different levels of risk appetite. So that's why also that's why you see when you look at an order book, you have like it looks like an upside down wedding cake, or, or where obviously with increasing spreads, there's more and more orders. Um, so that's something you can control here. And then so the next feature that I'm going to discuss is inventory skew. So actually in, in our article, we had a graph, we had a picture here. So this, I think this kind of explains it. So what this is, is um, again, going back to the risk for market makers, the risk is you're overweight or underweight your assets. So in our example, like if, if, if uh, several of my bid orders are filled, what will end up happening is I'll be uh, overweight in them. So I'll increase above the 50%. And then the, the risk there is like, if prices go down, then I'll, have, I'll be overweight them and then my assets could fall. So you typically want to try, to try to maintain some kind of equilibrium, some kind of balance. So what inventory skew does is dynamically adjust your orders based on your level of inventory. So here in this, what this image is showing, it's let's say my target weight of them BTC is 50, 50 of each. If my holdings of Zem increases by fit more than 50%. So as in, if my bid orders are being filled and I'm accumulating more Zem tokens, mm -hmm. what this would do, it will adjust the size of my orders. So it will decrease the size of my buy orders and increase the size of my sell orders mm -hmm. so that okay. it tries to get me back towards 50%. And then conversely, it does the other way around. If I've sold too much Zem, so now I'm underweight Zem, then it will increase the size of my buy orders and decrease the size of my sell orders. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so right. you could you could kind of think of it as kind of a balancing act because obviously, so your 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 inventory is always changing based mm -hmm. on your trading. 
And so what the bot's trying to do is always trying to adjust the size of your orders to try to get you back to that 50% whenever your inventory is no, kind of trading. That's really smart. That's really smart because again, this was a another issue I sort of had um, when I was running running the bot after we we set it up the first time is, you know, in some instances it would shut off uh, and I'd come and I would like look at the account and I would have just, you know, all of it would be in BTC or all of it would be in Zem. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's the market risk as well. If, if you, you know, I want to be exposed to both of those assets. And then if you lose, if you lose the exposure, I mean, then, then you're missing out on potential, potential gains there as well. Yep, exactly. And, and, and the other point here as well is for the humming of a miner, because the, the rewards are split between bid and ask orders, what happens if you're overweight, if you're hundred percent Zem, then you can only create and sell orders mm. at that point because you don't have any Bitcoin to place buy orders with. And then, so you're only participating in half the pool that's available. So yeah. to maximize kind of the rewards you're earning, you, uh, and also better for risk management, it's better to try to maintain a 50% uh, mix. So I'll just show how you how that works here. Uh, so on the bot, you can see um, the amounts that it's trying to create. So the 840 and amount adjusted column right now by default, uh, because I have not enabled inventory skew, it's, th it's the same. So whatever you've told the bot the size to make, it's, it's creating the same amount of orders, even though you can see here, my asset mix is slightly off, but it's not exactly 50-50. Yeah. So, so to set that, we'll just enable inventory skew. So set it to yes. So that's uh, config inventory skew enabled. And then one other setting is the, the base percentage. So now you can see what Hummingbot did is it checked my balance and it said, this is your current weight. And it said, mm -hmm. do you want to try to maintain this or do you want to use something different? So I'll just say uh, no. And I'll just put in, oh wait. It already the default had in 50%. I tried to put 50 again, but uh, actually so I'll just keep it at 50. Great. There. So if I hit back status again, you can see here it's already kicked in. So what it did is because here, um, since I'm slightly uh, overweight, a small amount in Zem, what it's done is you can see here, it's increased the size of my sell orders slightly uh, by this factor, by the, by the ratio, and then it's decreased the size of my buys. So where the bots was input, when we input it, it was going to create orders of 840. Now my buys are 798 and my sells are 881. So it's slightly adjusted that. And you can see here on, uh, on this field order adjust, that's kind of the calculation they said, uh, you need to adjust your buy orders by not to 95% and adjust your sell orders to 105%. Cool. It's very smart. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's one we definitely recommend for folks to use as we mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's another feature that a lot of our users use. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, def I'm definitely updating, <laughs> updating my, my bot after this. And then a few more. So the next one is field order delay. So what this is, is uh, again, just going back to this article because I think it shows a good uh, picture of this. So right now, the default behavior of the bot is it constantly, for every period in time, uh, it creates orders. So let's say it creates a first set of buy and sell orders, time period one, then it will continually create orders. Um, it doesn't really pay attention to like how your orders are actually being filled or not. It just by default, it just uh, does something repetitive, just create orders. So the, the problem there is that if you have a trending market, so in this graph, let's say if prices keep going down um, mm -hmm. one way, and, and that's also one of the big, with the scenario where the market makers have the most risk is, is when things are trending. What mm -hmm. happens is here is you're constantly creating orders and they're constantly being filled because the price at this point in time is just going uh, one way. So what field order uh, delay does is if ever you have uh, uh, one order filled to try to avoid these trending situations, it will pause and stop making orders for a certain amount of time that you specify until it, it will resume. So what that kind of does here is you can see in this case, uh, if I hadn't had that setting in this example, I would have bought the asset five times in a row because the market was trending that way. 
Whereas if we add this delay, you can add a buffer of time. So here, same market conditions, uh, same behavior. The only difference is I had introduced this delay. And so what this does here is instead of having those five or trades filled of buys like sequentially, it's kind of put a space in that. So I won't have two, two that are filled. Where, so here, uh, orders two, three, and four were never placed. Um, and it only placed it later once that kind of filled delayed period lapsed. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. And so if on the bot, pretty simple here, um, it just config a filled order delay. And now we'll put something, let's say 90 seconds. So this one, we can't really show the demo of that is just um, because we have to wait for the trades to actually be filled, but that's 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 the concept uh, here. Right, okay. And so is there like, um, a, a, because this seems like a great feature, but I mean, you said it's in trending markets where market makers have the most issue. So does that mean if I have the sense that the market's going sideways, I would take this off but then if we start going into a period of, you know, an up or down trend, I'm guessing like an aggressive up or down trend rather than like a slow and steady up and down trend. Yeah. I would, I would then turn it off, but yeah, that's if, right. If, yeah. If, if things are sort of not too volatile and like going up slowly or down slowly or sideways, then off if it's on, on sorry, no, no, no. I'd want it off. And then if it's gone really fast in either direction, I'd want it on. Yep. That's right. Okay. Um, and so one other strategy here, uh, just, just moving on to the next one, uh, so hanging orders. So hanging orders, it's kind of a, uh, another, another twist on how, on how you set orders. So what this does is, and, and uh, this is a strategy that's used by a lot of professional market makers that we've discussed with. So a lot of these strategies we're showing here are actually informed by, not just by us, but also with discussions with a lot of professional market makers. Yeah, who have it seems very professional. Like these, these strategies that you've got built in here are the exact strategies that professional market makers are using. So, I mean, the fact that someone who doesn't, who's just a trader, who doesn't really, who isn't familiar with the concept can come in and effectively market make is, is actually huge. Like I'm actually very <laughs> impressed with what you're showing me here. Great, cool. Yeah, and, and so this is actually one of the, so this is one of those features that was suggested by one of our uh, market maker like uh, uh, friends. So what this does is called hanging orders. What this does is, um, so if we go back, so by default, uh, default behavior, just kind of using this as a reference is the bot will just continue to refresh trades or, or every point in time, uh, like say after period one, uh, this sell order wasn't filled the default behavior is it's canceled and then a new one is put in place. So it's always just creating new orders and, and ignoring what happened to the old ones, whether they're filled or, uh, or un unfilled. So hanging orders mode is kind of one where it creates pairings of buys and sells. So what this does here is um, if one side of the order of that, that pairing is filled, so in this case, the buy order is filled, it actually doesn't cancel the other side. It keeps it hanging. Um, so what this does is at some later point in time, if the price is reverse, or if you have sideways markets, if there's ever a time where th there's a possibility that the price can go back to where that order would be filled, it just keeps it outstanding. So in this case, um, the order one, the buy was filled, the sell order one was not filled, but it's just kept outstanding because the bot remembers the history of this pairing. Um, it keeps outstanding, so at a later point in time, it's filled. And so what this does is kind of, uh, it kind of helps crystallize that bid ask spread. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it gives the bot an opportunity, depending on markets, to just lock in that bid ask spread whenever there's an opportunity to do so. Um, mm -hmm. And one other uh, uh, explanation here is, it's, 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 the bot continues to operate. So two, three, four, and five, those orders are still being created. It's just in this case, that one, the order, the first sell order is kept outstanding, and just to give it a chance to be filled at some point in time. And and this would actually increase the profitability of the bot as well, wouldn't it? Because you're not taking losses um, on the orders. Like hypothetically, if the market does come back in the direction of the order. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, here's the, and that's also like a lot of market makers, they just want to just lock in that bid ask spread if ever there's a chance. And because uh, if in the other case, if we didn't enable this, so you can see that the bid ask, the uh, orders two, three, and four, and five, none of them were actually filled mm -hmm. uh, because you're constantly changing, addressing them based on markets. So had this, had this feature not been enabled, you'd be, you'd only have traded the buy. Yeah. And you'd never have actually any of these orders filled, but since we left that one order outstanding, it's it's you're enabled to like to lock that gain at some point in time. Excellent, excellent. Yep. And so setting this one again, it's um, it's just config uh, hanging orders mode. Say yes. And then one other uh, one other parameter we can set here is um, cancel percentage. So what this is, 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 is it's a, at some point in time, if we go back to this graph, if let's say, let's say we kept this outstanding and the price just kept going downwards. Mm. Um, so that it's like, and obviously in this, in this scenario, if prices keep going down further and further away from that old order, the cell uh, one, um, then it, it becomes increasingly unlikely that you'll ever be filled. And then, so this next parameter is kind of like a cleanup kind of function. So if ever, let's say if prices, let's say 5%, we'll put five. So what this does is if prices have gone 5%, so if this spread, which initially would say like, let's say it's 0.5% spread, if ever, because prices just kept going one way and you still have this hang order, if ever that spread is now 5%, then it's becoming increasingly unlikely this will be filled. It will just cancel that order just so you don't have to have this like like uh, like order that's not really doing anything at that point in time. And it would kind of be like an, an idle use of your inventory, wouldn't it? You know? Yes, that's right. Yep. Oh, what is the book? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then um, some other features, uh, just moving on uh, back to this. So we have. I would say next one to is price band. So this is another, uh, this is also kind of somewhat directional, uh, a direction, directional feature. So it's basically, there's two settings you can set. So price ceiling and price floor. So what this means is if there's a level of prices where you think at that point, it's really cheap. At that point, the bot will stop making uh, ask orders and it will only create buy orders. And the other way around as well, price ceiling, if you ever hit that price, um, then it will only create uh, sell orders. So profit taking and not create buy orders. So um, so going back to this image again, the default, the default behavior is you create both buy and sells. But if there's some point in time, if you want to just say, hey, at this price, I think it's just too low that I wouldn't ever ever uh, sell at that level. You can set this, this uh, price ceiling a price floor in that case. Yeah. Um, I guess so. Zim BTC price right now, let's say, is uh, is a uh, point zero 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 six three six something like that. So let's say if I put something like point zero 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 five. So now that's what that does is if prices ever drop to that level, then it will, the bot will only make buy orders and it will stop making sell orders. Excellent. No, that's, that's really great because, you know, um, often in markets, you'll see the structure of price will be in a, some sort of channel, whether it's an, an uptrend you'll, or a downtrend or a side trend, there'll be, supports and resistances right yeah and um i think this is great because you know i could go in look at it look at xcm btc with for instance is, is which is in a downtrend at the moment right and so either side of that channel i could i could put i, I could set as my price floor and um ceiling and then likewise when it starts going up i could i could i could put that in as well and that that in itself is actually increases the profitability of the bot as well because you're essentially buying low and selling high right so yeah um, the, the, the trading 101 yeah okay yeah, exactly. great
And, and actually, one of the when we implemented this feature, a lot of feedback from our users was it helps them sleep at night more. Yeah, because yeah, they, sure. Sure. yeah. yeah. Because you don't want to be placing sell orders when you think the price is just like doesn't make sense at all. Because kind of. then the market's going to come back on you anyway, and then yeah, and then, yeah. love it, love it. And then uh, moving on to the next feature, and this is actually one that came up in the first the first uh, tutorial, uh, the ping pong feature, because it's one of the default questions we ask uh, when you're setting up the bot. Uh, so now it's time to go into that into a little bit more detail. Um, <laughs> and it's 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 also you can see that some of these are kind of similar, um, and you can use a lot of these features kind of together. Uh, but what ping pong does is it's kind of it again it tries to keep balance the number of buys and sells that the bot's making. So what this does here, it kind of keeps track. So in this example, order one, if your buy order is filled, it will stop creating buy orders. It will only keep placing sell orders uh, until your sell order is filled. So that way you kind of are able to match one for one whenever mm -hmm. the bot does a buy and whenever the bot does a sell. So in this example here, you can see when the buy order is filled, it's Keep refreshing orders as it would normally, but it hasn't. It stops making buy, buy orders, and then eventually, when you do have a sell order filled, then it will revert back to uh, making both orders. Um, and it works the other way around as well, obviously. So if if it, this graph were the other way, if you had sold, if your sell order was filled, uh, then it would continue to create buy orders and stop make, creating sell orders until uh, a, another another sell order was. Um, was filled, yeah. Uh, buy order filled, and then and then it will start making both again. Okay, so if I had this function on as well as the stacked order function, would would it only would this ping pong um, mode only work with sort of the correct um, order in the book if I had that stacked function on? Did that make uh, sense? Yep. So that's 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 such a good question. Uh, I'm not. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure of that offhand, to be honest, uh, with sing yeah. Okay. Here we yeah, have multiple orders. So we do have some, some here. So what this does, it shows, um, yeah, so there is some matching. So what this, what this says is like, if, if, um, if you have like three order levels, it does match them one for one. So like if your first buy order is filled, um, then it will stop making the buy orders, but it should still make the second and third buy orders uh, until a sell, a, the first uh, sell order is filled. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So again here, I mean, pretty simple, how to set the config. Uh, so just uh, ping pong enabled. There. I guess uh, one of the things here is uh, with these features, we can't exactly demonstrate them live that much. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's now enabled. So if we hit like a config to list our configs, we can confirm that it's enabled. Um, but this is, this is one of those, these features that, that, that we just showed. A lot of them you can't really see un until, you know, trades happen and some time passes. Yeah, great. Okay, so what is the next, what is the next feature we're gonna learn about? Those are pretty much the main ones uh, that we have uh, for inventory risk advanced features. Uh, the other things we can discuss as well is, um, uh, let's say, order optimization. So what this does is, um, uh, so if you're making markets, and this is probably less for the rewards, but more generally for market making. So what this does is, like, for example, if if you have specified uh, a bid ask spread of say 0.5 percent, but the actual order book itself is much wider than that. Let's say it's one percent each side. Uh, what this does, if you enable this, is rather than setting your order at 0.5 percent, which is much better than the current uh, order book before you had uh, before you had entered your order, it will, it will instead of placing at your order at 0.5 percent, it will place it at just inside the best level. So, but in that case, like if it's if the current bid ask bid spread is one percent, but you specified a 0.5 percent bid spread, rather than making it at 0.5 percent, it will make it at something like 0.9 percent or 0.99 percent. So, and so, so during periods of volatility, right, this would probably be a good function to have on because, you know, the spread might widen and rather yeah. than me trying to close that spread and, and that affecting the profitability of my bot, I can get the optimization to just put it in at sort of what would be a, 
a good level relative to the volatility. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it would be it basically so so it's it always and it always always goes wider. So basically, like it it won't it will not ever go tighter. So that's um, what that means is yeah, if 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 the bid ask spreads in the market have widened, but mm -hmm. your but your input parameter for bid spread ask spread is tighter, then it will mm -hmm. automatically just widen that for you. Yeah. If, if yeah, if volatility has, has increased, that's right. Uh, and it, it will not go the other way. So if so, if bid spreads are tighter, it will yeah. not ever tighten your spreads. That's always kind of like it will never go tighter than what you said. Okay. So what if what if I have I have this on and the market gets really volatile? So so my spread increases, then the volatility disappears. Will my spread go back to where I set it initially, or will yeah. it? Yeah, it, 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 will, it will always go back. So it, it dynamically adjust based on the order book. And, uh, but I guess the, your, your actual input spread is always the limit. So it will never go tighter. It can only go wider whenever there is an opportunity to go wider. Great. Okay. I like it. Yeah. So that one's pretty straightforward again, it's just order optimization. You just en enable it. Um, here, I think uh, the Zen market is actually pretty tight, so I don't think this will kick in um, at 0.5%. Uh, so yeah. that's why, uh, yeah, we can't show that actually working, but that, that that's what we would do. Typically, you see this; it's more on on on, on uh, less liquid markets, so let's say DEXs and hmm. or some or so, some smaller tokens where bid ask spreads could be one percent or even more. That's where yeah. you typically uh, uh, see that function really really uh, working. Okay. All right, so we don't really need it on. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. But I guess that that's pretty much it for now. Uh, that's all the the, uh, the advanced features that are relevant for Humming About Miner so far. Um, some of these other things are like, uh, just to comment on, just to go over what these are. Order refresh tolerance, again, this is another setting where um, uh, if this is where if you're, if the pricing hasn't moved much, then there's no need to cancel and replace your orders. So that this is what this does is like, if prices have say been relatively stable, then it, rather than the usual cycle of canceling and placing new orders, this will say um, within a certain threshold, then I won't I won't do that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and are there are there any sort of other features you want to quickly brush over or? That's sure. I think I think th those are probably the mo the most things so far. Um, I, I, I one other thing actually, like, I guess we just go through this whole list since we're pretty much through it. Uh, so order override again. So this is actually even more customization. Um, so what how what this shows is, for example, you uh, you remember when we when we set this is related to the order levels. So this this multiple order tier. Uh, you, you if you recall when when we set this, we kind of had regular intervals. So regular spread intervals. And regular order intervals or uh, size in intervals. Uh, this is kind of another way to customize that even more, where you can actually manually specify, uh, rather than having like a 0.5, 1, 1.5, just like a step functions, you can actually manually set those. Uh, so you can actually put in specific spread levels and specific order sizes. So this is a way to kind of, yeah, just to, to have it um, be, be more so manual. I guess you could skew, you could skew your bot to be buying more if, if you thought that, I mean, there's that there's gonna it's gonna be bullish and I kind of want to be accumulating well market making, you could you could do that through this by skewing how you um yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Cool. And um, I mean, is is that sort of is that did, have we finished the list there or? Yeah, I think we did. We really finished those there. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I guess one question a lot of people um, would would probably have on their minds when they when they're, I mean, setting up a humming bot, and I think a lot of these features are, are, are actually really great. Um, but I imagine some people would 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 struggle figuring out what should be the correct input. Now, I imagine a lot of it is sort of trial and error. But is there any? Yeah. Any way that you know a, a user who's new to this could get sure. some guidance on where they should be starting and right. you know what what's sensible. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. And actually, if we go, uh, so one of the 
one of the basic parameters that I guess is the big question is things like what spread should they set kind of thing. Um, so one thing that's actually useful is if we go to like the, the miners page itself, if we go to like the one of the Zen markets, let's say Zen BTC, we can actually, if you click on that, we can actually see what the weighted average spreads are across uh, all the participants. So you can see here, like in, in this minute in time, at this point in time, the weighted average across users was 0.8% bid and 1.4% ask. Uh, so what this is kind of helpful because at least it gives you some idea of what other um, uh, what other participants are, are doing because it's a weighted average, it's representative. Obviously, the, these are ranging between you know zero to two percent on each side. Um, yeah. So, but this can kind of at least give you a sense of what are other uh, other miners using and what are, and that could help be a reference versus okay. like having no reference at all. Excellent. And and it's it's the tighter the, that you have your spread, the the more yield you earn, essentially. Yeah, that's right. So the the tighter the spread, uh, the more rewards you get because it's weighted um, uh, based on spread. Right. And the yield, is that of the amount of orders that go through from from my bot or is that, that on how many orders are typical? Yeah, so what this yield is, it's, it's basically the amount of rewards total available um, versus the amount of liquidity at that point in time. So you could think of this, this figure as kind of an overall uh, overall kind of sample of, of what the general users are getting. Um, but if your if your spreads are tighter than than the average, then your yield would be you know higher. Uh, yeah. So you can see here how do you calculate this is it's there's a hundred so this reward pool if you break it down to per day, uh, it's a hundred eight dollars per day. Uh, so liquidity, so what liquidity is is as of this minute, how much orders from the users uh, have put in in this this minute. And so the yield is simply just what's the total amount of award versus the total number of orders. And that's okay. how you get to this 0.85%. Cool, cool. Okay, and, and just to, if anyone's looking at this and thinks that the reward's not high enough, the more users we have on this, the more we're gonna increase the reward. So that's not a fixed, that's not a fixed number. Uh, it's really up to the, up to the community on, on sort of how big that reward pool will be um, in case anyone was wondering. Cool. Um, so, I mean, that's that's really good. A really good st sort of starting place on the bid ask spread. I mean, just in general on the other functions, is there sort of some sort of place we can get an idea of, of inputs as well? Or yeah, I, I think I think a, a good place is our, our our forum. So our our Discord channel. We have we have a trader chat channel. So that's definitely a place where we we recommend or encourage members of the community to chime in and a lot of them will chime in. Uh, so just to help guide you. So there we have we have 24 seven support. So we always have support ready to help you configure your bot, um, help you kind of understand how the parameters work. Uh, we can't actually give you recommendations uh, on what to set uh, apart from just helping you to understand what they are. But on our forums, that's where we do have communities who engage in these discussions. So you, if you want more information to discuss parameters, we what we encourage you to to go there and chat with the community. Awesome. Okay. Well, Carlo, this has been very insightful and very helpful indeed. Um, I'm not sure there's anything else I really need to know now, apart from going in and setting up setting up my bot with these advanced features. So, uh, I mean, thank you very much for coming on a second time to teach us about your bot. And uh, yeah, I mean. Again, if anyone needs needs some more info, there's the Discord with Carlo, or um, I mean, going onto the website, you can see there that they've got a list of the advanced features and, and how they work and how to input them. But apart from that, I mean, I think I think that's everything. And unless there's something else you wanted to add, no, I think that's it. Yeah, definitely encourage you guys to participate in our community if you have more questions. I know the world of market making is it can be pretty complex, um, but I, one thing I would say is we definitely have been successful being able to have hundreds of new users enter the space and um, be successful at it. So that's, we definitely encourage folks to reach out. We have lots of resources to help you, uh, to help you try to succeed. Great. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Carlo. And uh, yeah, good luck to the community with your hummingbot.